good, good. That's good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Oh, oh. Bawa lunga pia. Ah, ni fak malu lunga, mal fak man yanga. Let's go. Let's go. No, na yo tato ai na le ni tayo. Ah, fak malu ina pia. Let's go for let's go. Ina wo tato filwa i. Ah, ida ro fak mal yanga le yo let's go. Praise the Lord that we can gather this morning. Um, here uh, in the fellowship of believers and the gathering of the saints. Uh, so wonderful to be here today. So let us pray. Ma na vaola mai la ufio, ulea matu te titaloa i na ia vi ia oelo matu te tua, iso se mea lava matu te faia, lea matu whaano ngolongo i la ufio nga pa ia, whaamanuia i au au auna ngua matu maafuta i le ni tai au, i na ia bea bea la ufio nga pa ia, ole sulu yo matu vaya mana mana malama, yo matu wala i na ia matu wola manga wa ia i. Ea la atu le matu te titaloa i a desu, amene. Maamini. Le nita ya o te fia fa'awa wina pea la tato mataupu sifun malitoru o le mua mua le koronito. I se mataupu fa'autu wina fa'a pea ua na'o le alofa e tu mau. We've been looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and today we want to continue. We'll be looking specifically at verses 8, 9 and 10 this morning with a sermon entitled The Permanence of Love. Uh, we've been looking at chapter 13 and we've covered um, uh, this whole chapter verse by verse as we've been uh, traveling through um, the, this letter of Paul to the church in Corinthians. And we've arrived at chapters 12, 13 and 14. And so we've been looking over the last uh, month or so at chapter 13 in the context of uh, this letter. Our title Faita wina maa o ina le le tusi le a Paulo ile kale si e koronito. O lo tato ya i mata alpu ye e tolu. A mata alpu sfuma le lua, sfuma le tolu, man sfuma le fa. E fa ta taula i le fao nga ina o me alofa ale nganga pa ia. Po me alofa o atu wina mai te tonu ole e kale si a. Malona fao nga ina. Ma o tato ya i la i le mata alpu se fulu ma le tolu. Malona a oa o ina. In verses 1 to 3 of chapter 13. We see that Paul introduces that there is the most excellent way that as he talks to them about uh, the, the use of their spiritual gifts, um, he also introduces at the end of verse chapter 12 into the beginning of chapter 13 that there is a most excellent way that as they consider their spiritual gifts, as they consider what the Lord has blessed them with in their contribution to the Lord's work and the church, that love is the most excellent way. Our tato ya ile awa oina la nta ku sifun ma le tolu. Um ile awa oina o le fao nga ina me alofa. Sa ile awa wala e sili sili la ba le na tala noa mai olo abatu e paulo ile e kalesia e fao nga ai ala to me alofa it tono le kalesia mai ole alofa ole awa wala e sili sili la ba. Then we started looking at uh, verses 4 to 7. In this section of chapter 13, we see the qualities of love, that Paul emphasizes what love is, uh, that the qualities of, um, of love are those 15 uh, components or 15 uh, action words, verbs that we uh, were able to look at over the last uh, few Sundays around what love is and what love isn't. Um, Ele ngata wa au mai e Paulo le au wala e sili sili ai fa matala ina fo e Paulo we no le alofa ma va ina ta wa le alofa ta to te lo ai le atania o le alofa le fa ti no ma le alofa fa pena fo ila ma va ina e le ta ta u i le alofa le la la ta to wa wa ina i le fa u pu e fa se i o i le fa pu e fitu so we've come to a um, or um We've come to an insight and understanding of what biblical love is. We know that there's a there's the world's definition of love. Le wata tu iloa e yaile fa awi na ina le alofa wa au mai le lalo nami. I it's a tau ile kalesia. It's tau ile tanga ta fa tua tua. We as believers need to understand well what's the biblical definition of love. What's the biblical standard 
that we have for love, for charity, for agape. Ah, atato mata mata ile le upule o le alofa. Tele yo winga wa au maile la lo nani e famatala ile alofa. I lela what I told you, I lela what we know for your name, name at our pool. Let us see a Paulo le cale, see a coronito, a yale winger, ole a lofa, olo au maye tom, or let us see paia, malea fionga paia, a lea tua. That we understand that um, a biblical definition of love is the fact that God is, God himself is love. Ah. And we see that in First John, that God himself is love. That we see that love is uh, sacrificial. Love is selfless. Love is never about the individual. Love is not about me. Love is not about one's emotions or feelings. Uh, that love is humility in its characteristic. Uh, that it's ultimately about serving others. That love is a verb. Now, we now understood that those 15 characteristics was love is an action. It's not a feeling. It's not something that tingles inside. Uh, and It's not love between Two people, no, love is something that you do. Uh, and so that's what Paul was trying to uh, reinforce in the definition to this church because they had lost their way in terms of how do they uh, apply a biblical, godly love inside the church at Corinth. Um, and then therefore, um, in the definition and in the understanding of what love is, is how do we love one another? And that's a... a um, an application that we can apply to us as the brethren of today, us as the church of today, how do we love one another inside uh, the, the, the church and, and how we operate as a local church? So, E e le e le maita wina le alofa ana lava mea ha o le alofa e alofa atuai ile isi tangata o le alofa e au au nai ile isi tangata o le alofa e tu uifu ai le tangata ilalo aeva ava ai ile isi atangata o ina fo ila tato te iloi o le alofa e le ose langona o le alofa e le oni fa langona a o le alofa o le o le ngai oina e e yai e fa ile tino o le alofa e fa atino so, I told you, therefore, in name, I see now, my awala, it's a far long way to see for here, my hour, we know the upper to a my ever I fall away yet, oi, or am my um, lea lofa, or lea, or am my low savalino fatua to a malibanga la lea ilo lava, or langa so for, or nala, or lazy bang or mana or polo in the Yamala Mala, my le cali si cornito, or am my lea lofa le tassi e lea tassi, because of Angala now lea lofa. E ao ina ia mālama la mai tātou o le e kālisia. E ao mai lo tātou walofa o le tasi i le tasi. So after Paul takes um, sort of a, a deep dive here in verses 4 to 7, he then moves on to verse 8 um, and he looks at verse 8 through to 13 at the permanence of love. Um, that love is the only thing that remains. And this is what we're going to be looking at over the next couple of Sundays. Uh, verses 8 to 10 today, and then the rest of this chapter next week. Ile tai au lale nei, o le atato tilo tilo, o mea u ma lava o lo tala noa mai ei paulo, u ana o le alofa lava e tu mau. I le faonga ino me alofa, i le mau ae o me alofa, e pau lava lea o le mea e tu mau. That the gifts that the current were, uh, were starting to consider is... <laughs> Oh, this is it. Ah, this is the standard of Christian living was this particular gift. Whereas Paul is saying all those gifts, they will soon pass away. Ah, some of the gifts have ceased. But Paul is saying this is the only thing that will remain. And that's yeah. love. And the permanence of love is where uh, we would like to look at today. So, faith, we know that we to in detail. We have to say that We'll start off with the reading of the scriptures in Samoan and then in English, please. Fasamoa, ele uma iya. 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 Ele u
Ai pei tai pe ao o mai le a to to ona fa ale ao nga ina le a o le mea fa ale a to and in english ia love never fails but whether there are prophecies they will fail whether there are tongues they will cease whether there is knowledge it will vanish away for we know in part and prophesy in part but when that which is perfect has come then that which is in part will be done away verse 10 but when that which is perfect has come then that which is in part will be done away we'll be looking at the, uh, these three verses in three parts today and the first part i want to look at is uh, verse 8a uh, with a with a subheading love remains I told you why I know to fear Tilo Tilo. If I pull it, told you not to fight to win. I let it go. If I hang on more, 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 I'm not going to fight for value. It's too mau le alofa. It's too mau le alofa. Ah, so we praise the Lord that out of all of the spiritual gifts, that this is the one that Paul highlights here in chapter 13. And as he goes through uh, these 13 verses to highlight. Um, that uh, the importance and the excellence and the superiority of love in what we as believers must continue to strive for, uh, we see here that in verses 8, uh, he opens up that verse with those three words, love never fails. The word um, never fails. The word never means that not even at any time. and comes from the Greek word that explains that never at all. Uh, that this will absolutely never occur to love. And the word fail comes from the Greek word ekpipto. And ekpipto means in English to fall into ruin, uh, to perish, uh, or falling from a high position. Uh, so those are the English definitions of the word to fail. So the idea here that Paul is saying that love will never perish, love will never fail, that love will never fall into ruin, uh, that, that love will never cease in other ways. Uh, it's interesting too that it's the exact same word as what Luke uses to describe uh, the shipwreck in Acts 27, um, where he's talking about um, the winds that carry that tempest storm that carries the ship that Paul was in. And as they're trying to avoid uh, crashing into the shore, he uses that word ekpipto to describe uh, being grounded onto the shore. Ah, uh, lena <laughs> So so when, um, when Paul is trying to explain the excellency of love, then takes us through the qualities of love, what love is, what love isn't. And then he comes into verse 8 to, to begin the journey of the permanency of love. He says, love never fails. That Corinthian church, the spiritual gifts that you're pursuing, they will one day cease. They are temporary, but love never ceases. Love never never fails. Love never perishes. And that's the point. Huh? That's the point of God's word. And I think an application for us today, as a church today, we, we must consider love. Sometimes we may think of love very lightly. 
But when we continue to think of it as who the very essence of who God is, then we understand the point that Paul and the scriptures are trying to tell us here, that love never fails. And I just want to bring some scriptures here just to uh, uh, flesh that point out there. That First and foremost, let us go to 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse 7 to 9. And here, as we've mentioned already this morning, that love is of God himself. So that God himself is love. As we read there, uh, as John writes this epistle and he says to the believers, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And it says there in, um, at the end of verse 7, Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And then he says there in verse 9, he writes how God loved us. And it says there, In this love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Brethren, this morning we're reminded that love never fails, number one, because God himself is love. Ah, that we're reminded by John, we're reminded by the scriptures today, that he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Ah, that we are reminded today by the word of God that love remains, love never fails, love never perishes. Why? Because God is love. Two, we see in uh, the same chapter 4, uh, verses 17, where John writes these words. He says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Earlier on, John is talking about Christ himself, that we, that we know that love never fails, because the ultimate example for us is the love of Christ. We know that love will never fail because it says their love has been perfected among us in this. That we may have the boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. I think if we think about the most fearful and the most anxious people in the world, it's probably all of us in the room. And there's this boldness that we now have, not because of what we, what we can do, not because of our own strength and our own abilities, but because of Christ, uh, because of who He is in us. Ole mafu anga lona lua o te fia au mai e le nei tai au e fata tau i le alofa le a le mafai ona fa umatia le alofa le a le mafai ona muta fa mai watatu i lua tau le nei ole atua ole alofa lava ia e fa mai le matau pu lava le na e fa fa ipo sfumal fitu fa mai upo yoane. I ona oia, oile oia le talanoai, um, ya, ya yoane i, o lo talanoa oia, ya yesu, ah, na efe me efe pues fumal fasu malima, 
Oi mato foi o mato va aia o mato moli ma wai foi o alguina mai ele tama o lealo o le faola o le lalo lani fa mai o o se tau tino atu o Jesu o lealo o le atu o ia o lo tu mau le atu i totonu yate ia e se ai le ma fai ai ona fa o matia le alofa e se ai le ma fai ai ona muta le alofa ona o le atu o le alofa lava ia e fa mai fa pois o mal fitu o atu o toa le alofa ia te ita ato ona oia ah Oile oia lea ona o keriso ah that love never fails because of who he is and that uh, that wonderful reminder that John gives us there that love has been perfected among us that man when we think about Christ and who he is when we sing our songs and we talk about the fact that he came in the flesh for our redemption to die on the cross and be buried for our salvation then we praise the lord uh, as ian uh, led us wonderfully today that we praise the lord for the fact that christ and his love has been perfected among us and because as he is john says so are we in this world so love never fails because of who god is two love never fails because of who christ is and third we look at chapter 3 in first john and in chapter 3 verse 14 To sixteen, in tapu eto lu fai pu suma fa e o ile fai pu se funu male ono. It reads, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this way we know love, because he laid down his life for us. and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren again we have Christ as a standard Christ as the example and there it says there and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren love never fails because as a church as a brethren as believers in the scriptures we continue to understand that the standard of love is sacrificial ah ole ole alofa le au mai le tuspa ia ole alofa tu uwi na tu Ole alofa ele manatu ifo pe le manatu fa apito ai ole alofa le fa me ye le fa ipule na esefulu maleono ole mta apu etolu fa mai ole me alava le ne wata tu ilo ai le alofa ina wata mi na tu e ya lona lava so ifu a esu ya ita to na tala no ya Jesu fa mai eta tau fo i ona ta to tu ina tu lo ta to wola esu ya i le auso Elema fai ona elema fai ona mate elema fai ona uma lea lofa etu mau lea lofa ona ole lofa etu tonu ma lefa winga ina ole tuspa ia ole lofa ole lofa tu ina tu a lea la o tu ina mai e ke risolo na ola e su ya ita to a fa mai la e fai pule na e se fulu ma leona fulu ma leono e tatau foi ona tato tu ina tu o tato ulo ola e su ya i le auso a so ole alofa le alofa le elema fai ona uma elema fai ona muta elema fai ona fa umatia ai se a mo mo ona ole alofa ole atua lava ia a ole atua ole alofa lava ia lua ole tato fa ta ita ina o keriso lava ia tolu ole alofa fo ile a ole alofa e alofa ile tasi ile tasi that when we consider why does love not fail why does love never perish uh, we see that the bible clearly gives us the definition and the standards and the examples that the standard is that god himself is love christ himself is the example of what love is and then there is a there is a love that the, that action the verb of love is for us to love one another jesus says in john 13 verse 34 he says a new commandment i give you that you love one another as i have loved you that you also love one another he's talking to his disciples here but at the same time it applies to all those who are followers of jesus christ a new commandment remembering that commandment is not a new commandment to the, the ears of the disciples huh? they heard to love your the lord your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul that was from the times of moses but in the times of christ That love became a sacrificial love. Ah, 
It's, it, Jesus then sets the new standard of love, and that's a love where he would give up his very own life for his disciples and for the rest of us. And that's what Christ is saying. He's saying, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Isn't that beautiful to know that the reality for us as believers is that love never fails if we love one another. And, and that's, and that's, a, and that's a, a, a big expectation. But I think that's the reality that we need to be reminded of for us as believers. And that's, that's a beautiful thing, that if we love one another as the church, as the brethren, then the world will see, oh, okay, then that's what true Christianity looks like. That's what the church of Christ looks like if we love one another. Second part that we see in our text today is that we see in second half of verse 8 through to verse 9, it says there, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. <coughs> whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. The second part that Paul uh, reinforces in these verses today is that not only that love never fails, but the gifts that he's writing in context to the church at Corinth, they are only temporary. Uh, the gifts that are... Uh, that they are seeing a division in amongst the brethren, and that they're pursuing as the way, and Paul is saying, no, 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 there's a more excellent way. Mm -hmm. These gifts are only but temporary. Uh, and so he reinforces that in verses 8 and verse 9. He says, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. If I pull a valum of a pui, Vailengata, Olo Almay, Polo, and Fepue Valu, Olea Lofa, a two mau, Olea Lofa, a two mau, Lea Lofa, a lema vai, Lea Lofa, a le uma, Lea Lofa, a lema fight on a fat umatia, Lea Lofa. I on a fine maila, your Polo Fepue Valum and Fepueva, Omea Lofa, Omea Lofa, a nutta, Omea Lofa, ya, Olo, Olo Avea, ma, Vaina, it to no le calesia. So what we see in um, chapter 13, we see that Paul will highlight here these particular three, or he uh, refers to these particular um, gifts. Um, remembering in chapter 12, there's that whole list of the the spiritual gifts that he was talking about uh, in chapter 12. But here in chapter 13, he brings out these uh, as an example. Uh, uh, so prophecy, uh, we see knowledge, and we see tongues. And he makes reference of this here. And as we go into chapter 14, the, in chapter 14, we actually see Paul write specifically about the use and the misuse of the gifts of prophecy and the gifts of tongues as a focus on chapter in chapter 14. So here, as he says to the church, love never fails, love never perishes, love will never be destroyed. He goes on to say, but whether there are prophecies, <clears throat> tongues, or knowledge, those gifts, they will cease, they will fade away, they will vanish. And and, and the reason why um, one of the reasons why we think that Paul is highlighting those particular gifts. Because if you remember back to chapter 12, um, in verse 21, 
there were those who were saying that they were more superior in terms of their gifts compared to everyone else. Remember verse 21 back in chapter 12, it says, And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. This was, this was how Paul was describing how some gifts were saying they don't have a need of the other gifts inside the church. Pelo <laughs> So, o me alofa ia, pe ua vea ma me alofa e ma natu fa a maua lunga ai le tangata kore nito. E fa mai paulo, o me alofa na ito te ma natu fa a maua lunga ma ma natu fa a sausilia e. E i una fa a lea o ngaina, e i una umma, e ma vai. A o le alofa, e tu mau. So, Paul is trying to underscore his point here by highlighting three of the gifts. One of the things that I found in terms of the words that Paul uses here and we here at Petrwood believe in um, that, the, that particular gifts have come to an end. So if you look at those three gifts that have been highlighted, uh, there's prophecy uh, and there's knowledge. And as we taught in chapter 12, we believe that these gifts um, are permanent and are still active. Prophecy in terms of preaching the word, in terms of teaching the word, in terms of sharing the gospel truth and the scriptural truth of God's word not in terms of telling the future ah, not that prophecy but prophecy in terms of sharing God's word and knowledge in the fact that we continue to aspire to know God more through the truth of his word so when we look at those two gifts it uses the word um, fail and vanish the word fail and vanish is the same Greek word kata geo, kata geo. Uh, and the meaning of that Greek word is to render inactive or cause to cease. So if you look at those two gifts um, that Paul uses as a reference point here, the prophecies and knowledge, um, he says, will fail or vanish. But the word tongues here, the gift of tongues as the third reference of a gift in this particular verse, um, he uses a different verb here. And the verb that he uses here, in English it reads, um, there are tongues, they will cease. And the verb there is uh, the word pao. And pao translates to, it comes to an end. So, um, and it also describes that as, um, it, that tongues will naturally come to an end. We believe that tongues is, was a sign gift at the time of the early church and the apostle age and was used by God in terms of before the times of scripture, used by God as a way to continue to reaffirm the, the birth of the church, the establishment of the church in the early church. And the tongues were used at that time purely for the fact to continue to establish the work of the Lord. Prophecies and knowledge, on the other hand, the word kata geo comes from a passive verb. And a passive verb means that something or someone will cause it to stop. So when we understand these three particular gifts that Paul highlights um, to the church at Corinth, that they are temporary, 
then we understand that all gifts, love is superior, love will remain, whereas the gifts, they will, they are temporary. Ile fa amala mala maina o le fa upule a ona la e ma vai me alofa le fa mele apostolo o le alofa e tuma o le alofa e le uma a o me alofa a le le fa me fa upu e valu me fa upu e iva o perfetanga o ngana s s a male upu le poto a le fa me e paulo o me ya fa me paulo e le ngata e fa ale a nga ina a fa me e ma vai a le fa me e o perfetanga e fa ale a nga ina ia Peni ngana e mavai ia po ole poto e faale au nga ina lea. O mea alofa ia e tolu, o lo au mai e paulo. Si tato o vaaba ai te isi ai ale ni tai au. Ona la, i mea alofa ia e tolu, e tali tonu i tatou, o le mea alofa le nga ngana ese ese, ua faa muta ina. O le mea alofa le tautala i nga ngana ese ese, po le mea alofa le tautala i nga ngana. So a tato wa nga i le mataa kwa suma e faa, E ma whaia iona tātou tilo tilo, ma wha'a wha'ai i le whamatala ino me alofa ia. Ae mone tai au nei, ia tātou i loa, ma tātou maramana mai fo ia. Nei tō te leo tātou, tātou te wha'a wha'ai i le whaa tino ina i tangata o mea ia o me alofa o tau tala nga ngana esi. Ae mone e kalesia, iona pō nei, o se tasi fo i nei o whai upu, tātou te i loa ai, o le me alofa o tau tala nga ngana esi, o le me alofa ua... Faa muta hina. So lele fai mai ia ia paulo, le fa ngai no le upu na, peeni nga ngana, e ma vai ia. A o le upu le poto ma le perofetanga, fa mai, o le fa ngta la ino o me alofa ia lua, fa mai paulo, e faa le ao nga hina. A tato baba ai fo iona po nei, o lo alu pele upu faa perofeta, e le o le perofeta o le ta ua o mea o le atutupu. A le upu le perofeta, o le isi iona... Fa a mala mala maina mai tutono tuspa ia o le lao maina o le upu. O le tautino i le mea moni. O le ao awina o le afionga pa ia ale atua. O le poto o lo tatou fa a wawina pea ina ia tatou tutupu i le poto e tusa ma le afionga pa ia ale atua. So le se senga ia o mea alofa ia e lua ma le mea alofa o le tautala ngana se ese. O mea alofa ia o lofa e mai paulo o le tasi ua ma vai. Ah, le lau tato wa oa wina, o le mea alofa e tau tala ngana se ese, ua faa mutaina. O le mafua anga le ngana se ese i le taimi o Paulo, ma le vai taimi o le unwa i e kalesia. Ina ia faa mautu wina, le e kalesia i lona faana o mai, i le taimi o le au apostolo. A ina ua uma ona tusia le afionga pa ia le atua, Ina ua faa mautu wina ele atua lana e kalesia. Ona mou mali atu pe ma vai atu lea. Ona me alofa lea o le tautala i ngana ese ese. Tau faa mala mala mai le tatou fai upu lea a. Ina ia tatou i loa ma tatou i loa. Oh ok nien, o le tatou e kalesia ya oa oina le vaenga lea. Just so that we can see that the contrast that Paul is trying to give here He's trying to contrast that love remains, but those spiritual gifts that you tend to be uh, um, prideful about, Corinth, those will cease. And that's what he's saying in this verse. And he, and he refers to all the spiritual gifts. Uh, and, when we, and when we think about um, uh, those that he's referencing here, it will help us to understand how do we look and consider spiritual gifts in their, in its entirety for today. Because then verse 9 says this, For we know in part and prophesy in part. Note there that Paul doesn't say anything about tongues. Ah, so he's talking only about knowledge and prophecy. Ah, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. Back in chapter 8 verse 2, Paul says this to the church. If anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing, yet as he ought to know. Ah. So he's saying to them, if you think you know something, well, you don't know anything, ah, as you ought to know. So he's saying to the church at Corinth, but also to us as the church today, we only can see part of, ah. and that's why further down in verses 11 to 13, that you know, we can only see through a mirror, but dimly. Ah. We only have partial knowledge as much as we have the beautiful truth of the scriptures, we still have partial knowledge. Uh, when um, John, 1 John chapter 5, uh, and it says there in verse 20, 
And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we know Him who is true, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And we praise God that through His Son, Jesus Christ, uh, we know and have an understanding. Uh, and every day as we walk our sanctified life and as we are sanctified by His Word, uh, we praise God that through Christ, He has given us an understanding. But yet there's still things that we don't know, uh, and there's still questions that we ask, you know, a lot of times we go, man, Lord, what did you mean by that? Uh, there's still things that we go to God's word and we have the entirety of God's word and we pray to the Holy Spirit to continue. So there's still that we only have part knowledge and that we still have uh, uh, part, um, you know, when we preach and teach, that there's still so much more to God that we have yet even to explore and touch on. If I put Eva or Lofa, maybe if I tell you, if I may. A while with Tatu, he law for Aleator, Matato, Bero Fetta for Aleator. For my leo, little Puna, Ile, Momoni, Anim Tapu, Lima Faipu, Lewis Fool, or Tatu, we law for E. Womaniu, my leo, let to her, where you for in a my four ilima for foul ya to eat tato, in a year tato, he law I or law on money, or ya for eat tato, he law on money, or Ilona, Alo, or Yesu, Keriso. Uh, ile upuna yoane olo fa matala mai yai ati tato. O tato i loa um, ona o keriso o mafai yai ona tato ma fau fau matato i loa olo o money. Ah, so evi i ane tua na le o tato i loa le mea money. Ai o o i fo i la tato te i loa e i lava i si mea tato te e le o manino yai ati tato e i le tato malam la ma anga e le i loa ato ato ah. Be on a famea, le fai salamo, le fai pueono, or le salamo selau tolus fulu, maleiva, fama le fai salamo, le fai pulena, or le potto le a silly on a fine attire tea, ua mawaluma, ote le mafaya, ah, fama le fai salamo, e we lava ina o we loa o le tua, i mea uma lava naia faya, ai, e matua mawaluma lava, ote le mafaya ona, ah, mata ona, mala malama. That when um, the psalmist says there in Psalms 139 verse 1 to 6, he says about God, and this is what the psalmist says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. David is saying, man, this is the God that I know. Ah, this is the God that has searched me and he knows who he is and he knows him intimately. But then Paul says in verse, uh, David says in verse 6, he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Ah, mm. As much as he knows the God who uh, is intimate with him, yeah. The knowledge of who, the reality of who God is in David's life, he cannot begin to comprehend. And this is David speaking. And this is the, that knowledge that, um, that Paul is saying here, but uh, in verse 9, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part, uh, as much as we've got the whole truth in our hands, there are still things that we continue to discover in the Lord. So the gifts are temporary. Uh, and so Paul is saying to the church at Corinth, those gifts that you're pursuing, those gifts that you're so prideful about, they will pass. But love never fails. But my lossy motato, why I need to wear a tuli tuli law, Malofa. I lay law, or Malofa, a little, 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 a little
When that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. And the final part of our sermon today is that uh, perfection is an eternity. Uh, that when Paul says there, but when that which is perfect has come. There will come a time. Uh, we teach that tongues has ceased um, in, in terms of it seeing it in operation here in the church. Uh, we know that knowledge and prophecy continues uh, in terms of the teaching of the word, in terms of growing in the Lord. But even for knowledge and prophecy, when that which is perfect has come, uh, verse 10 says, then that which is in part will be done away. And that's the, that's the time when we are in eternity, uh, that when we are in eternal glory, that there is no more need for knowledge and no more need of prophecy, but that, and that when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. In fact, we know all if I pull in as a fool from my IP type out or my the art or to a lela what at all or we know or the or the potto or the perfectanga or nana a una mavai from if I push a fool IP type out or my the art or to a or the art or to a or eat at all table I I or what at all about I I I I I I I I I I I I I E fa'avavau, o le atato va'avai atu i le unga o porkalame a le atua That we see at the end of God's um, end of days program uh, When we continue to see that unfold As we head towards um, God's promises in Revelation When we read Revelation 22 verse uh, 4 Actually I'll go first to First John chapter 3 verse 2 and we read there, uh, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And then John writes, as he captures in Revelation 22 verse 4, it reads, They shall see His face, and His name shall be on their foreheads, that in the eternity program of God, that one day we will come face to face with the God who created all things. And then, uh, then verse 10 will be uh, fulfilled. Uh, it says there, but when that which is perfect has come, when we are in the presence of a perfect God, that when we are in the eternal order, then that which is in part will be done away. Ea <laughs> So, so we praise God uh, that we know uh, the end of our days as believers. Uh, there's many that say that they don't know, that they'll just vanish, uh, they'll just perish into thin air and they just turn to dust. Uh, but believers, you, we must hold on to the hope that one day, that we might not know everything. Uh, we have the beautiful word of God that continues to teach us. We continue to preach as much as we can, but this is all still part of uh, 
we're all still uh, continuing to be obedient to God's word. But man, that one glorious day, uh, that moment when we are face to face with the God who created all things in the God's eternal order, then those that are in part will be done away. Uh, and that's the hope that we have as believers. Only we can can stand on that, can proclaim that and, and stand on that hope. So today's sermon, um, uh, sort of a first part of a two-part, um, this week and next week, we're looking at the permanence of love, uh, that love will remain. We've looked at the gifts that Paul is talking about in the context of the Corinthian church, that the gifts will pass away. But one day, uh, when uh, which is per- that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Reminding us again of looking ahead to that hope that we have in the Lord. So, Ilenitaya, o tatui lo, o le alofa, a etu mau. O tatui lo, o me alofa, ele etu mau. Ah, e elo na o nga, malona fa o nga ina, e tuto mo le kalesia, e efo me alofa ua, fa a muta ina. Ah, ua le etu e fa o nga ina. Ae, o me a uma lava ia, pe ao o mai le ato atua, ia o na, fa a le a o nga ina lea, o me a, fa a le atua. Ah, so, vi ia le atua, that even though we don't know all things and we have the word to guide us, but man, praise God for his grace and mercy that continues to give us the truth so that we can live out our faith. So praise the Lord for today. That you be encouraged, saints, uh, that you continue to have a look at your life of of um, love, have a look at your life of using those gifts that God has um, placed on you to contribute to the body of Christ. And how do you continue to worship the Lord through those things? Let us pray. Father, we thank you because uh, your word is the truth. We thank you that uh, we're reminded that love is what remains. And that, Father, even in this area of our lives, help us to continue to love according to uh, the biblical definitions of how it is that we must continue to love you and love one another. We thank you once again for your truth. We thank you for the opportunity to edify one another uh, through the preaching of your word. Uh, We praise you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.